Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe what's meant by a reversible reaction. You should then be able to describe what's meant by a dynamic equilibrium. And finally, you should be able to describe what's meant by a closed system. I'm showing you a reaction here. This is the combustion of methane and oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. Now the combustion of fuels like methane is an example of a one-way or irreversible reaction. Carbon dioxide and water are stable and will not react together to form methane and oxygen. We show an irreversible reaction with a single-headed arrow as in this equation. Now in contrast, many reactions are reversible and I'm showing you an example here. This is the Haber process, which is used to make ammonia. In a reversible reaction, the products can convert back to the reactants, and we illustrate a reversible reaction using a double arrow. Now I should point out that the double arrow actually means a reversible reaction that can reach equilibrium, and we'll see what that means later. When the reactants convert to products, we're going to refer to this as a forward reaction. And when the products convert back to reactants, we're going to refer to this as the reverse reaction. So let's take a look at what happens in a reversible reaction. I'm going to start my reaction by placing my reactants in a sealed container. Now a sealed container is an example of a closed system. And a closed system is a really important idea in chemistry. In a closed system, no atoms can enter or leave the system. So at the start of the reaction, we have a high concentration of reactants and we have no products. Now because we have a high concentration of reactants, the rate of the forward reaction is very high. And because there are no products present, the reverse reaction has a rate of zero. As the forward reaction proceeds, the concentration of reactants decreases and the concentration of product increases. Because the concentration of reactants decreases, the rate of the forward reaction also decreases. And because the concentration of product increases, the rate of the reverse reaction also increases. Now eventually, there comes a point when both the forward and reverse reactions are taking place at the same rate. At this point, the concentrations of both the reactants and the products remain constant. In other words, they stop changing. And scientists say that the reaction has reached equilibrium. Now, there are a couple of important points about this that you need to understand. When we reach equilibrium, the forward and reverse reactions have not stopped. Both the forward and reverse reactions are still taking place, but at the same rate. And this is why the concentrations of both the reactants and the products are now constant. Because both the forward and reverse reactions are still taking place, scientists call this a dynamic equilibrium. Secondly, as we said, at equilibrium, the concentrations of both the reactants and the products are no longer changing. But that does not mean that the concentration of the reactants is the same as the concentration of the products. In the reaction I'm showing you here, at equilibrium, we have a greater concentration of reactants than products. In other reactions, we could have a greater concentration of products than reactants at equilibrium. And in other reactions, the concentrations could be the same. Okay, now the final idea you need to understand is that we can approach the equilibrium from either side. Imagine that I started this reaction with just products and no reactants, but I keep all other conditions the same. At the start, the reverse reaction would have a much higher rate than the forward reaction. However, in time, the reaction would reach the same equilibrium point, with the reactants and products having the same relative concentrations as we saw before. In the next video, we'll start looking at Le Chatelier's principle and how this relates to dynamic equilibria.